Hello Ratbags, it's Jade, welcome to a special Grounded video today. Yes, Grounded content, where have I been with it? It's been like a week and I haven't actually had much Grounded content since then. Well, I've just been spending some time with the family and I had a bunch of pre-recorded stuff for some other games like Windbound and Drake Hollow. Some of them are pretty good, I'll be giving some reviews on them. Anyhow, it's all back Grounded today and yes, the update content, it's fair to say, I think a lot of you guys have sailed through it. Like, you'll probably know all about the mutations now, you'll know where to get the crow feathers, you'll know about some of the other stuff that was in it in terms of the new quests and stuff. So I went digging around and I found that the developers did a live stream with State of Decay developers, Undead Labs, and they had just a nice bit of fun. The community manager from Grounded Shyla. Adam, the creator, as well as two of the guys from Undead Labs. They spoke about the game while I was playing it for a good hour, and we did get some nice, tasty morsels of brand new information, or certainly confirming some stuff that I hadn't seen much elsewhere. They've also done a couple written interviews as well, so I'm going to go over one of them slightly and just talk about some of the stuff that they've had in terms of developing Grounded. So yeah, it's all good. I'm going to give you some info hopefully very soon about a hotfix that's going to be incoming for Grounded. Not a big update. If you're expecting big content, it's going to be happening at the end of the month. Every end of the month is when they have got their big content. And in today's interview, that confirms that even more, that we will still see hotfixes during the month. But at the end of the month is when you can expect more content. Also a big one, is it going to ever come to the PlayStation? So don't forget to get to like and subscribe. Let's go through some of the stuff we learned. So pretty much they went over to the mint container and they spoke about the fact they're going to be adding more tiers of weapons to do with mints. They're debating whether or not they're going to make it spawn more. At the moment you can find mints in the ant hill. That's where you'll find some pieces if you have maybe mined out all of the mints that are inside the cap. There were reports that they were spawning after around three days but it does look like there have been some changes to that. So it does look like though they want to add more tiers, more weapons and tools made out of the mint stuff in the future and that leads us on to something else we learned later on as well adam was asked if they're going to carry on going with the tiers we know there's like a tier 4 item in the game but what level are they going to keep adding stuff to i think that's one thing that we're probably going to just keep going um and then probably eventually rebalance once we feel like we're getting out of control um so it's something that we just have to kind of take with each update and we add more we'll have to kind of reevaluate how much how much stuff is there? Do we have more ideas uh, to increase the tiers to you know four or five? Um, so it's something that we're just gonna kind of evaluate during early access and game preview. So all these videos you're seeing of the best weapon and this one does that stat, I would all take it with a pinch of salt. Just like every other game I've ever followed in early access, there's always going to be lots of nerfs and buffs, but I do like the sound of them doing this. Adding more specific items I think is a way to go as well. Keep adding just lots of variety and choice so you've got a different outfit or different set of tools and weapons for each occasion, rather than always just using that one big tier set to do everything in. Um, yeah, that's something that yeah definitely is a, a interesting point where we don't want we don't want that power curve to get out of control. So uh, we're trying to keep it pretty pretty sane in terms of the materials that you can craft things out of. Uh, and we do have plans for more stuff. So tier three stuff, a whole host of new things um, using uh, insects that we'll introduce over time. Um, so there's going to be a lot more things that you'll be able to craft more armor sets and higher tiers of weapons um, and we'll kind of evaluate hey is that enough or do we need to add some more after that Adam was asked about character creation and whether or not we're going to be seeing another character added to it or how did they come up with the idea of their four main characters and they spoke a lot about their influences and how they got to it but the really thing for me is that they're not planning on adding any more playable characters at this time and it doesn't look like it's going to be something they're going to be focusing on at all um, right now, we do not have any plans for more kids, so we're going to stick with our three or our four right now, and then uh, we'll look at where we go with that um, after we kind of finish out the story and stuff like that. We wanted to have four very distinct characters with different personalities, and so we kind of made a chart of different personality types that we wanted, um, and then Kaz and Mitch, our two artists, did a bunch of concepts of different clothing um, based off, the, off of those personality types. 
So it all kind of makes sense. Remember, Grounded is a story-based game first. It might not seem like it right now because the story is so short, you can get through it in about 45 minutes, but eventually there is going to be a lot more story, there's gonna be a lot more quests. So the idea of having just multiple characters that you could chuck in or some sort of character creation that you can customize yourself, I don't think that's the plan for them. I still would like them to see, come up with a way to do more cosmetic items. I think that should be something in the future, but let's stick more to what they're just speaking about rather than what I think they should do. So Hoops, we wanted, uh, she, she's like a natural athlete and she loves basketball. So we kind of took it from there and we wanted to, um, you know, explore different outfits that she could possibly wear based off of, you know, what would a teenage girl in the 90s wear um, if she was into basketball um, and kind of came up with her outfit. Also brand new to me is that the game is actually set in 1990. I knew it was the 90s, but I didn't know it was so early in the game. It's, it's set in uh, 1990. Some of you guys were pretty upset that I said that Grounded Devs maybe got some of their ideas from Smallland, which has made a resurgence recently. But of course they've got other inspirations, and I go through some of them here after being asked. Are there any other games that inspire your designs? Like Monster Hunter, for instance? Or, or, or EDF? Oh yeah, I mean, I think we're inspired by like so many games. We're gamers at heart, you know, and we play so many different types of games, survival games first and foremost, but everything else, like you can see that there's a lot of uh, inspiration from like Portal, for example. Um, I love Portal. Um, I think there's inspiration from uh, Monster Hunter. I know a lot of uh, our uh, devs on the team play Monster Hunter. So moving on, Adam was asked whether or not they're going to add an Iron Man mode to it. You guys will know that I've said the difficulty of the game, even on WoW mode, is still a little bit too easy. And it is just down to no meta. Like, Ark has taming, I've said it before, Conan has other stuff, but Grounded doesn't really have something to keep you busy waiting for updates. At the main moment, it's base building. It takes lots of time to gather the right resources to get a big, nice, huge base up. But there isn't anything that's going to really take your time daily all the time. So having better difficulties in the game or having more challenging difficulties where you'll be hardcore, if you die, that's it, you've got to start all over again, could be interesting in the future. That's a great question. So the thing that we're trying to do is make sure that the game's pretty stable before introducing an Iron Man mode just because we don't want players to get super frustrated because there's some bug or other blocker. So we want to iron out a lot of the bugs before we introduce the Iron Man mode. Um, but yeah, it's on, on our list of things to do. A really interesting one is whether or not we're going to see any larger creatures or talking about the bird. And the bird may not actually be here to stay or it may change in how we interact with it. And the bird, I, I wanted to see like what would happen if we had a huge, huge creature in the game um, and kind of just like experiment with that. So it's it's definitely experimental right now to see like how can the player even interact with something that huge. Uh, so we're kind of looking at it from that perspective. Adam was also asked about community events, like could there possibly be some holiday events or is there going to be a common goal? Like in some games, you know, if 20 million blades of grass get chopped down, maybe everyone gets a cosmetic. Which is just my example, but that's what the interview I was basically getting at. I mean, we talked about it on the team. Um, it, it's something that I think if we do something like that, it might be a little bit further off. Um, we do want to do maybe some fun things for the holidays. So we are looking at um, potentially just adding a fun little thing that you can get during the holidays. Um, but yeah, other than that, like I would love to do like crazy uh, community events where every, like not only do you do stuff on your own world but you you build towards something that's even greater than that i think that's an amazing idea and i'd love to explore something like that at some point in time um but i think that's a that's a pretty long ways off for us <laughs> In case you have missed it previously, Grounded is going to be in early access for probably at least a year, maybe even longer. It's not going to be this year, of course. Um, so it's going to be sometime like we're shooting for next year. But if if we say like, hey, it's not ready, we don't find it to be like fully finished yet. We're going to continue to work on it as long as they let me. So. Also pretty interesting that they're not going to be scaling up. Despite the success, millions of players have played Grounded. It was the number one game when it launched on Steam, not even just Xbox, but they're still keeping it small. We want, we just want to keep like keep the team small. We're not planning on growing the team um, and seeing how far we can, we can go with it. 
Um, and I think, like, uh, we have our plans and I think we're going to try to see like how far are we in six months from now um, and then reevaluate. But uh, yeah, we're not going to be announcing like when the final 1.0 date is. Also pretty crazy to hear that all the animations you see in the game are made by one animator. That's pretty mental. So the idea that we're going to get loads of different bugs every single month is probably a misnomer. They do talk about this in the interview. I'm not going to go over it completely. But they do say that one animator is doing all of that. And hence why it might be difficult adding lots of different creatures like mantises and scorpions and stuff like that. Yeah, there's... Uh... There's a lot of awesome creatures and insects that we, we would love to do. I think the, the one challenge for us is that we're such a small team. Um, we, have, we have one animator on the project. So doing any insect is a huge endeavor for us. And uh, like a scorpion, for example, is even uh, at normal scale, scorpion's really complicated. There's a lot of moving parts with a scorpion and we would want to make that scorpion really cool, right? So. Um, it's one of those things that we're still like looking at, like how many creatures can we do? Um, what's the cadence of making new creatures? And that's something that we we'd love to do a scorpion and a praying mantis and all sorts of new and, and cool looking creatures for the future. So it's definitely on the table of something that we're looking at. Next up, Adam was asked about weather, whether or not that would make an appearance. You guys seem to think we can't have rain because the big raindrops would absolutely drown everyone involved if they're running around the backyard. Yeah, um, yeah, weather is on the roadmap, and it's something that I would love to do um, and add uh, a system around it. So I, I think, you know, weather is, it could be a whole sort of things, but we're looking at stuff like, hey, what if, oh, there's a bird. I can see him. Okay, um, I forget what I was even saying. Um, oh, yeah, weather, weather. Uh, yeah, like, we want to add a system around it, so we're looking at, we're looking at uh, you know, hot days, cool days, uh, what happens if it rains, uh, overcast, if there's a system around it. So we're exploring a lot of different ideas on uh, how to do weather and um, the effects of weather on the game. So I want to do be catastrophic. Yeah, it's going to be insane, right? <laughs> um, yeah, but it would refill all of your water basins yeah. and stuff. <laughs> They were asked about the end game as well, and they obviously said that they're going to get the story in and they're still thinking of ways that you can carry on. But basically, they're thinking there'll be a choice for you. So maybe before you complete the last mission or maybe if you don't want to experience the ending of it, you'll have a choice just to go and play a sandbox mode or carry on playing the rest of the backyards till you're ready. Now, what does Endgame look like, though? What is the loops? And I've said it before, talking about the meta, and that's kind of the same thing, is what is the loop that you're going to be doing while you're not doing missions? Um, they didn't really have too much to say about Endgame, other than that quite a lot of the focus is on base building or building your forts, and that to them at the moment is the end game, making your base or getting your builds quite big and ready for new income or new stuff that's going to appear. We're going to continue to work on the game, so that's not going to be just like the end of the experience. We want to continue to continue to add more to the game even once we hit 1.0. And the big one, is it coming to the PlayStation? But uh, is this game going to come out for PS4 or PS5 at any point? Uh, <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> and, uh, we are a first-party Xbox game studio, so uh, the game will be, and it is on Xbox One, so if you have Xbox One, you can get the game right now. It's on Game Pass. So if you're a Game Pass subscriber, you can play so many awesome games. I do think that's going to crush a lot of people. There may have been an expectation that because Outer Worlds is on different devices, it's on the Switch, it's on the PlayStation, that you may have seen other games from Obsidian appear. But the truth is that deal for Outer Worlds was struck with 2K Publishing or a side division of their private division before they were bought out by Microsoft. Hence why it appeared on the PlayStation and it appeared on Nintendo Switch because another publisher was in control. So now though, Xbox is in control and despite previous attempts by Phil, the big guy at Xbox, to say he doesn't want to have a war of exclusives, he'd like to see games on all sorts of platforms, it looks like Microsoft are actually deciding that no, they still need some first party exclusive games. So rip to all the PlayStation fans, you're going to have to play it on Windows 10 or get yourself an X-Bone. And then just the last thing I want to show you, Den of Geek did a written interview with the devs. And although it's pretty small, it just shows a little bit more about how things have gone in terms of Grounded over the last month. 
and also talks a lot about the landmarks, how in Fallout News Vegas it was important to have them as a guide to kind of keep you centred about where you're going so you remember stuff more. And they want to carry on doing that with Grounded as well. And just talking about um, how the insects move around and they've got that ecosystem as well. And that they love the idea it's a bit like Jurassic Park where you see something moving in the bushes and then you know instantly it's going to be something big like a spider so you've got to run away or get ready. So big shout out to State of Decay, go and check that out. I will be covering State of Decay 3 in a big way. I'm very excited about the possibility of that game in the future. And I may be revisiting State of Decay 2 very soon. So go and check out their channel if you want to see the whole vlog. I will link it in the comment section. But yeah, this is just what I'm going to be doing from now on. Any news we get at all, I'll let you guys know. If there's any interviews, I'll condense it down smaller for you guys. And obviously I will give my bit of opinion on it as well. But I'll try and include whatever the devs actually say so you know I've not misconstrued anything i will keep you guys up to date on grounded and the best in survival until late then later's rat bags